Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day on this glorious day here on the Gold Coast. We finally have some sun. And so we now get to go outside and have a tan. It's been weeks of rain. The markets are also heating up. Traditional markets putting in higher closes at the weekly ending uh, on the weekend here on, on Saturday, Friday for you guys in the US. This is leading to some good signs for cryptocurrencies and of course the US dollar dropping beneath the 50% level. This is the collapse that we've been watching and preparing for as the media has signaled that the market should go up higher. The news is always wrong. That's what we're going to look at in today's video and look at some of the uh, possibilities and the potential for the altcoins. Even the altcoins are starting to look a little bit hot. Don't get confused. Short term versus long term. That's what we get to get into in today's video. So make sure you like, subscribe, bell notification icon. Lots of stuff heating up here in the markets, even if it's getting colder out there in the northern hemisphere. First things first, S&P 500 closing higher than it has done for the last one, two, three, four, five weeks. Good, good signs so far. Remember, we have been looking at that low. We've been discussing that this is a very good area for a low to be forming in the markets. And for anything lower than this point, should this not be the low, we go a little lower, we still have a very good support level at 3,200 points on the S&P. So no one knows, I don't know if this is going to be the exact low, but what is coming out in the news and in the markets does make it look like it is forming a reasonable bottom. I've said many, many, many times before from the tops that any of these low periods are going to take months to form. I just want to reiterate that because uh, I guess if you're sort of new to the markets or you're just watching news headlines, it's very easy to get uh, lost in the news headlines and just think the low has to be in or we've got much further to go. There's going to be a collapse in property prices, a collapse in the stock market, yada, yada, yada. These headlines usually come out near the bottoms of the market, just like at the peaks. It's expecting that the, the media is expecting the market to go up a lot higher and you get the flip side on the downside as well. So things are looking pretty good for the S&P 500. Nice bounce off our GAN 50% level. Remember, these levels are into the markets months beforehand and it's so far dead on that level. Like I said, 3,200 and then for the macros, 27. We've got plenty of time to go before then. Let's keep looking piece by piece as this market starts to bounce up. The same sort of things happening on the NASDAQ. And we've got to ask ourselves, like, why? Why is this all of a sudden happening in the news, even though we've seen this bottom come out uh, coming up to two weeks ago now? It's about 11 days ago. The bottom was in on the 13th of October. NASDAQ is looking pretty similar to the S&P 500 in terms of the pattern. The bottom there uh, early last week or the week before, and now we get that close up at 11,300. Remember our 11,800 resistance level that we are waiting for this market to overcome. If we start to get higher, uh, bigger ranges to the upside, that's also a positive for the bulls. Okay, so I've looked at that for each of these moves as the markets happen. This stuff will happen when the news is bad. And so it's going to fool the majority of people most of the time because they're expecting major collapses Yet the smart money, whoever's buying this stuff is saying otherwise and the facts, the data, the truth can be found from the chart. That's They're telling us what they're doing here, not what those headlines are saying, not what the economists or the online analysts are saying, we've got to expect further downside, not what the billionaires are saying, expecting more and more uh, recessionary periods. They're essentially not the ones who are playing the market. The billionaires are potentially working away in their businesses, Elon Musk, et cetera, okay? So that's why it's good to differentiate these two. At least that's what I do on my analysis. And so far, so good. All right, so the other thing we want to look at today is the Dixie. And we're just opening now. So the market is just opening for the new week, the 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 early hours, so pre-market opening is happening now. And then the market will open sometime tonight for us, and that'll be the... US Monday morning. So we had the lowest close in the last one, two, three, four weeks. So last week closed low, closed beneath the 50%. The key level here is going to be that 109 on the Dixie. Now we're starting to see this on a macro play here. We're looking at the weekly stuff. This is the first lower top that we have seen on the weekly chart for the US dollar since a year ago, November, December of 2021. And so that little weakness uh, happened 
at the peak of 22nd of November, had a lower top, another lower top, and then it got a low. And so for that entire period, the decline was about 2.38% before the market started heading higher again. So this is the first time we've seen that since there. So this is the first, well, for me, the second signs of weakness. We had that big blow off in September. That was the news telling us that everything was going to dump against the US dollar. Uh, the Great British Pound was going to go to parity or below parity. The euro went below parity. Everyone was freaking out. Everyone was piling into the US dollar. And now we start to see another sign of weakness, a lower top confirming over the weekend, collapse, and the close beneath the 50% level as well. So I'm really looking for a, a close, a significant close here under the 109 level to continue the confirmation of this topping pattern playing out for the US dollar. Point out many times before, maybe we have a push down and we push back up uh, to around that 118, that's a 50% level. You can see just up here at the top of the chart. Either way, I'm looking at this as a topping pattern that can potentially play out over the course of many, many, many months. Like has happened in the past, each of these topping periods has uh, taken somewhere between sort of 15 months and two, two and a half years, like in the case of the uh, the GFC here, that was about uh, two years at that top. Although the market did go a little bit higher, the pricing was basically the same for that entire period of time. That's what we're looking out for now for more signs of that, which then means maybe we're going to see a, a flow back into the stocks and of course commodities, prices go up and of course risk on come becomes a thing again and uh, Bitcoin starts to have its day in the sun yet again. How is all this happening? Well, we've got the interest rates rising, why is this going on? Well, if we start to see some of the interest rates, uh, the rises that are due out next week from the US, and they happen to be about the same as the previous interest rate rises, it may be that this is factored into the market already. And so an interest rate rise of 0.75, which has uh, been the case over the last few interest rate rises, is not going to spook the market it's going to be in line with what the market thinks and therefore it's going to be deemed as good news and potentially keep the price the same or push the price up a little bit. So that's what the analysts are widely expecting the Fed to hike rates by 75 basis points for a fourth straight meeting in November. So if it's around expectation, markets might go up a little bit from there. And what happens in the markets is that, of course, they're all front running. And so if that's what they're expecting, then they're going to start front running it from now and push the prices up to that point. And so this is basically all coming into alignment with the low. And that's what we have to do as traders and investors is start to think what is the market going to do next. We obviously follow the charts because the news is always, always late. Should this be 50 basis points? And of course, that's going to pump the market even more because it's even less than, than what they're expecting. And so that's what we're looking at in terms of the news, in terms of the why and why did this happen uh, in terms of a low of what we saw two weeks ago and now the price has been going up for the last uh, week and a half, two weeks on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Going across to Bitcoin, we had that low come in on the 13th on the futures market uh, of October. So that is the low for this cycle on the futures market. And of course, on the spot market, the cash market, it was in June and we just had that recently a couple of weeks ago. But let's look at the futures chart first, see if we can get any data from this. Of course, Weekly highs are still lower and the weekly lows are still lower. So we've got a downtrend here on the weekly chart. But all that has to happen here is for the market to get above 20,500. You know my significant level is around 20,700. Get a close above that. Uh, and then we are on, uh, on the game for a confirmation of the swings to start heading up again so that we can test higher prices of the 23s, the 25s, and ideally before this area broke down here around that 27-ish. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I hear the, the comments and that sort of stuff saying, you know, you've got to factor all X, Y, Z in, blah, blah, blah. Let's just focus on this being the bottom range of the market. I know there are a lot of people who still think the markets are going to go down a lot further and tank in terms of the S&P and property price collapse and everything's just getting started. But honestly, take a look at a chart. It's been nearly 12 months of these downtrends and a lot of the uh, the downside has probably been factored into the market already. Nothing is confirmed as per usual. So let's see where this starts to take us. I would say over the course of this week and into next week leading up to the announcements from the Fed and see if the market has begun to front run this already. 
and we've seen this in the charts in terms of the uh, the trading signals and the swings from the market. So that's the futures market. It closed relatively the same as the week before. The spot markets, the cash markets, the stuff that we all trade on our beloved cryptocurrency exchanges here. Uh, this is still my cycle buy zone. These are those levels there, the, the yellow rectangles that um, we've talked about here many, many times on the channel before. In terms of a longer term dollar cost averaging area for Bitcoin, because you know I do split these up between Bitcoin, ETH and altcoins. And now I said earlier in that intro that altcoins are potentially going to go on a bit of a pump here. I'll show you why in the total three charts. So all of the altcoins, that's the chart excluding Bitcoin, and excluding ETH in just a moment. The game is going to be trying to be able to pick the right ones, of course. Uh, so that's going to come down to everyone's individual strategies. Of course, if you're trading cryptocurrencies, make sure you are using an exchange that you are comfortable with. Maybe something that has no KYC, like I've got in the video description of Bybit and BitGet, which is open to all users all around the world as well. Links are down there. You get up to $13,000 of sign up bonuses using those links down below. And that's going to be helpful if you want to join us for our trading seminar that's coming up in a few weeks time. You'll need to use those links. So if you are subscribed with someone else's link, that is going to be what you'll have to do. Get onto that link, uh, fund your account, and that trading course could be yours for free. And we're putting that on so people can learn how to trade in these periods so that they're ready for those bull markets. That's gonna be absolutely free provided you use those links in the video description. So going back to Bitcoin in terms of the DCA, breaking that up between Bitcoin DCA and cryptocurrency trading short term, let's just focus on the DCA stuff, the longer term for Bitcoin. We're in this low period, 11.5K to 19.5K. The emotional move from this period, should we get a break above the swing tops is probably the case of FOMO. You know, people are going to start to FOMO in thinking they missed out on a sub $20,000 Bitcoin. If we get that little bit of a pump up, we've had a couple of good signals here so far, just with the bottoms holding out at 18,000 and then the closes being above 19,000 as well. Uh, that is going to put a little bit more pressure on Bitcoin because the volatility has been so tight over the last several weeks. And we'll get, eventually have to pump up and break these downtrends and then work towards the next ones. And so from this level, we're waiting and watching 20,500 here. And like I said earlier, 20,700. So that's going to be the early stages of uh, Bitcoin's strength uh, to the upside to see if we can get some, some signals for from the bulls to come back into the market. If I'm using this here, Coinbase... Uh, this shows us the 50% is at 20,400 and I really want to see this level right here. That's uh, for me, like it's been uh, for quite some time now because we've got the double bottoms at it. I think the, the plays that are underneath these levels are still essentially traps until we can cleanly get above that and then work our way above 21,400, which is the next key 50% level. The Bitcoin market's taken a few signals from the US dollar market as it began to open its trading before the pit session, which is uh, later tonight for us and obviously Monday morning for the US guys. And obviously it's climbed up a bit from there. So it's, it's just basically climbed back to those resistance levels. That's why I'm saying I'm still on alert in the short term. The medium term, got to get back above these levels, but at least we're starting to see some of those signs come through in the short term because that's what you need to see in order for the macro to play out. Shorter term stuff, medium term stuff, bigger term stuff. And we're trying to climb back above that, like I said, probably this week to next week. That leads me to Ethereum, which is holding up above 1280 bucks. That was the previous resistance zones back in June before the market took off for the ETH merge hype and subsequently dumped straight back down to those exact levels. And so if you missed out and you did a really good job of not getting FOMO'd in, now the market's found some supporting and above those highs. So around this 1300 level is holding out relatively well for ETH. What we're looking out for next on ETH is the 50% at around $1,500. And then my flip target here, my Wyckoff flip from the bears to the bulls is back above around 1850. With this on log, we got the downtrend. So we're still at these lower levels, but in terms of a, a chipping away area, downside still remains. I'm looking between sort of 700 to 1000 but potential downside, but at least this is a better area for a DCA longer term, I'm not talking about short term trading, but the longer term stuff better here than it has been at those peaks of the market when everyone was FOMOing in about the ETH merge. And looking to the ETH BTC, this is also just finding some support on our bigger timeframes. Look at that on the 50%. And I've got this looking for the next level of resistance around 
seven and a half percent. So ETH BTC looking uh, looking strong as well. Now brings me across to altcoins and. This is where we currently find ourselves without stable coins at about $200 billion for the total market cap of cryptocurrencies of altcoins. Remember, stable coins make up about $150 billion. So if you take $350, which is the current price, $350 billion minus $150, you get about $200 billion. Before, when this chart was done up, stable coins didn't make up so much of the market, but they've taken a lot of the market during this last bull market and bear market. Therefore, we need to readjust this a little bit. So uh, without the stable coins, we're probably at around 200, which is a reasonably good support level considering what's happened in the past. So if we start to get a bit of a bounce here, maybe the market jumps another uh, 50 or so billion, 50 to, 100, uh, 50 to 100 billion dollars. If that was the case, from our 350, 450 is the previous peak in August. So just looking for some sort of resistance there. If we're to get some good trade on. Uh, trades happening for altcoins. All right, so you still got to pick the the stronger ones, the ones who have put in higher lows are going to be the best, not the ones that keep dropping lower like ADA. Sure, they can still be traded, but uh, just looking at the, uh, the charts in terms of the strength and the weakness for the stronger horse and the weaker horses, that's what you want to see looking for those altcoins which are putting in uh, higher lows to then push higher and test the previous resistance levels. So I've said a lot in the past that I think altcoins will still have a lot for the downside. I am speaking of 20,000 altcoins. There are going to be altcoins which now is probably a great time to be buying for the next cycle. I can't do 20,000 altcoins in this particular video, but stay tuned to the channel and we'll continue to update where we are seeing strength in the markets. Otherwise, join us in TIA Premium and TIA Lite. Links are in the top of the video description where we are trading altcoins at the moment. There is a ton of calls out for the altcoins. So make sure you join those if you want to be part of our crypto trading for beginner series as well. Lots going on right now with this potential of an October low. I'm quite excited for it. I want to see the confirmation, but at least we're getting those first few signals through that this could be a good low for a bounce. And then following a potential bounce, maybe we start to break some of those macros, depending on which ones, of course. I hope you guys are happy and healthy and enjoying the sunlight if you're in Southeast Queensland. It's the first sunlight we've had in quite some time. I'm going to go get some sun. Join us tomorrow's video. It's going to be another big one. Like and subscribe with the bell notification icon turned on. Links in the video description or check out the videos that are popping up on your left hand side right now to trade cryptocurrencies. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, peace out.